Today on To Be The Church, we talk about Max's weight loss transformation and, more importantly, how husbands should love their wives like Christ loves the church. Welcome to the To Be The Church podcast, where we look at what it means to truly be the church. I messed it up again. Where we explore what it means to truly be the church in today's culture. I'm Ben. The grown-ups are back in the room. Yep. Me and Max, who are actually younger than Tyler and Andrew, but yeah. we're here. Max Janish. Hello. So good to see you, man. Good to see you too, dude. So tell me, how great has your life been like the last six days since I got back to work? You've been gone for three months, and I've done more work in the last six days than I've done, <laughs> honestly, this year up until this point. I've, you've been <laughs> over my shoulder watching me work, so I've had to work. Uh, I appreciate your honesty. Yeah, I just wanted to be really, just throw that out there. I'm just, it's really good to see your face again. Um, I'm probably being a little clingy right now just because, you know, I missed you so much. But I what, I, what was really concerning for me was you were so distraught that I was gone yep. that you weren't eating. And Jeez. you <laughs> lost all this weight. And if I wouldn't have come back, oh my gosh. you probably would have just shriveled up and died. Maybe. Well, how you've so, come back, I've, it's, it's been harder. No, but you have lost a lot of weight. Yes. And so beyond Diet Dr. Pepper and cigarettes, how <laughs> how have you done it? Like what's been, is it Jenny Craig, Weight Watchers? Oh, I think I was telling you this. People have been really disappointed because people have, to especially when I've come over to East Vancouver or have just seen people who I haven't seen in a couple of months, and they're like, oh, my gosh. Because um, since... Uh, late uh, like since december of last year um i've lost about 65 pounds Dang. um and yeah i've had a lot of people be like oh my gosh like what are you doing and we talked about this a bit ago but it was it was like they're like really wanting <laughs> why is cody, cody laughing at me like the cody's like he's still fat too uh, no <laughs> diet, diet oh, dr man. thunder yeah and no dr shasta uh no um no i feel like i let people down because it's like getting lots of steps in every day exercising a couple times a week, eating a lot less bad food, eating a lot more good food. Nice, man. That is it. Good job. I'm Thank proud you. of you. So that's not why people tune in to this podcast, I don't think. But who cares? I don't care why they tune in. We're in charge now. We can do <laughs> Tyler and we Andrew want. have abandoned yep. this audience to us. Um, so let's talk about this. Uh, do you have any pet peeves? I have a lot of pet peeves. Okay. I feel like I'm mostly... Tell me one peeves. of your pet peeves. And I'll tell you one of mine. Oh, man. You go first. Let me think about it. Okay. Well, mine's yeah. going to lead into what we're going to talk about. Okay. Okay. So you can tell me yours later. Yeah. So one of my pet peeves is when people who have been married for like two minutes okay. start to give marriage advice. Um, or, yeah, people that are newly married or not even married having podcasts and going on YouTube uh, and giving a bunch of advice. And so I want to talk about marriage, Okay, but I don't want to be that person. But I think I just celebrated, well, I know I just celebrated 15 years married. Nice. All right. So do you think that is long enough to give some marital advice? It's more than twice as long as me. So yeah. How long uh, have you been married? Uh, my wife and I, early June, six years. Six years. Okay. Yeah. So, um, Which I thought we'd have things figured out by like a year and a half in. So, yeah, pretty disappointed yeah, there. Right. But, uh, um, so I think you know, I've, I've been married 15 years, I, uh, I've done many weddings, premarital counseling for most of those weddings. I've counseled a lot of couples, uh, marital counseling just as a pastor. And I think the reason this is kind of on my mind is, um, I mean, obviously, I've been on sabbatical, but. Over the last year, um, in, in our local church, um, and not just this last year. I mean, ever since I've been a pastor, and even in my my personal life with friends outside of the church, I've seen and been a part of just a lot of marital mm. issues, and um, it's really disheartening and discouraging. You know, when people uh, are their marriages are struggling, they're struggling, um, and there's kind of a uh, there's kind of an underlying theme or a thing that's kind of been on my heart that I, I would like to, to talk about um, in regards to husbands and men. But before I go there, um, what do you think about that? Like 
about just marriage and even your own marriage, marriage of your friends. Why is it, why is it so hard? Why does it seem like marriages are just really difficult, not just outside of the church, but inside the church amongst Christians? Yeah. You have six years experience. So yeah. So like, I mean, here it comes, people. It. Be ready. Uh, I'm confronted every day with the fact that I'm just like a wretched sinner. Yep. You know, and the absolute hardest seasons, like the seasons that are just like, why is this not getting better? Um, there's certainly like, there are certainly like outside, like factors outside of just this, but I feel like I'm just continually convicted by the fact of like when I'm getting the most frustrated when the season feels like it's going on for the longest, you know, the season of just kind of like feeling like we're just, in a funk or feeling like we just like as weird as it sounds just like can't get along like things like that it's just like it always ties back to just man i need god's grace i need grace from alice and my wife i need grace from people around me like i need called out for just being a lazy husband being mm. you know um i really do i think yeah there, i know that opens like a whole can of worms but yeah no i think <clears throat> why is it so hard it's just like because neither of you are because perfect yeah like because husbands and wives are in the middle of their sanctification yeah. yeah and you're so often expecting the other that is far and away the least fair thing that i do to allison on a regular basis is i like when i'm very aware of my own sin when i'm very aware of the things that i'm wrestling through i'm struggling with um i like need her to be perfect and it's so unrealistic and unfair um, yeah. Yeah. Well, so that kind of, uh, leads into the things that I've been thinking about. Um, one thing I've seen whenever there's marital issues is that, uh, uh something that poisons a marriage relationship is, uh, selfishness mm. and specifically selfishness, um, amongst husbands. Um, now myself personally, our church, we are complementarians. Uh, we believe that husbands are the head of the home, that wives are called to uh, respect their husbands, submit to their husbands. Um, and uh, and so, yeah, I, I mean, not ashamed to to say that's where we where we land on that. Um, but I don't want to necessarily focus on the the wife because we don't have any wives here represented and I'm not a wife. Uh, What I have seen in my own life and a lot of the the men that I've counseled is a lack of taking seriously the call of the husband that's given to us in the scriptures. Um, You know, in that uh, Ephesians 5 passage, uh, wives are called to submit uh, to their husbands um, as, as the, uh, the church, um, submits to Christ. Um, but then it goes on to talk about what the husbands are to do. And this is Ephesians uh, five, starting in verse 25 husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she might be holy and without blemish. <coughs> Excuse me. You can edit that out, Cody. Um, so this call here of the husband is uh, first and foremost not to make sure that his wife submits to him, mm. um, but is to love his wife as Christ loved the church. And so what that means is that the husband is literally to die to himself and put his wife first in everything. Mm. And when I counsel couples, I see a lot of husbands who there's kind of this scorekeeping going on, this, well, I would do that, but she does this, and all this kind of conditionality between love. But when you look at this passage, husbands are called to love as Christ has loved us, and Christ did not love us because we loved him back. Mm. He did not love us because we deserved it, because we have earned it. He did not love it us because we could give him anything. He just laid down his life for us because of grace. And that's what husbands are called to. And I think a lot of times husbands just don't take this call seriously, mm. that no matter what your wife's doing, how she's acting, 
Um, your role is to die to self and to put her needs and her interests first. And when you do that, what I've seen over and over again is that a wife uh, who is loved in that sort of self-sacrificial way wants to submit to her husband, wants to follow his lead, respects him, um, and and the marriage flourishes. Uh, but if there's selfishness, it just leads to all sorts of issues. So as I talk about those things, what, what do you think or what stands out? Yeah, I think just with that submission piece, and I'm really, I'm really thankful that this is the angle that we're taking on it. Um, it feels really foolish to try and like do a really comprehensive thing, like without our wives in the room who could, you know, do what scripture says they ought to do, which is push back against us sometimes and, you know, sharpen us and all that. I will say, and again, I say this as um, young guy, young in ministry, young in marriage, young in just life in general, like I just do not have a lot of life experience, but from what I have seen being raised um, in a solid complementarian church and seeing complementarian um, beliefs and practices like out there in the world and within our own church, I do, I think that and again, maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong, but I'll just throw this out there. I think there's way often too much talk in the complementarian world about like it's like let's let's talk about complementarianism. Let's talk about how wives need to submit. And I think there's so much there's such a greater call again on the husband where it's like maybe worry a little bit less about making your wife submit and maybe worry a little bit more about for the glory of Christ leading, like for the glory of Christ, like leading your family spiritually for the glory of Christ, like um, doing what he has called for here and in other places in scripture. And so, um, no, I agree. I mean, as you're saying all of that about just the, the that self-sacrificial, that Christ-like love um, that a husband ought to have and demonstrate for his wife, I think, yeah, I'm very convicted of. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm convicted in the last 12 hours. We have a one-year-old who, um, yeah, is just not sleeping well right now. And I am, to put it in theologically rich terms, such a butthead to my wife um, mm-hmm. and so selfish, like wanting my own sleep, thinking about the day that I have ahead. Um, yeah, like, and there's that choice in all of those moments of like, am I going to be frustrated by that, be frustrated by my shortcomings and my sin. And am I just going to take it out on my wife and my boys? Or am I going to actually like repent of it and look to Jesus for grace and then look to my wife for forgiveness and for grace? Yeah. Um, I just like, and I, I don't do this perfectly either. I just think it's a, it's a call uh, to husbands that this is the goal. Christ is the example. And he's given us the Holy spirit who empowers us to actually do this. Yeah. And again, I bring this up because I've sat in so many counseling meetings where I don't feel like husbands like take this seriously, where it's like, again, like, I I mean, the wife has responsibility and she brings things to the relationship. But like, regardless of all that, you're called to love her no matter what, to put her first no matter what. And uh, when you do that, it, I think you lead well, you lead like Christ and it leads to a lot of... Uh, a lot of flourishing in marriage. Um, and I just, yeah, I just see husbands that are just like either blaming their wives for things or, you know, if she did this, then I would do this. Or, um, I expect her to serve me when it's like, you read this passage, you're the one that's called to serve her, right? You know, she submits to you and respects you, but the husband's called to serve her Mm -hmm. the way Christ has served the church. And, uh, so I think this is just a call to any husbands who are listening um, this is our call. Christ is our example. Um, and it's hard, it's difficult. Um, but we have to die to self and, and put our wives first because that's, you know, that's what Christ has done for us. And really not only is that the reason, but that's the motivation. Mm. Um, is it like a million degrees in here? I'm like dripping sweat. Um, the, uh, the motivation is to think, well, why should I love my wife that way? Um, well, what did what did Christ do for us, right? He put us first. He put our needs above his own. He served us that he might sanctify us. And so when I realize Christ has done that for me, that's what motivates me to want to do that for my wife. Mm-hmm. And uh, it leads to a... Um, it, can, it can lead to a really happy and healthy marriage. 
Yeah. Well, and it's an area I feel like we as husbands need to we need to get our priorities straight. You know, like not just like is this something that scripture so clearly commands, but it's like I think there's and again, I'm saying this to myself before I'm saying it to anyone else. Like it's like I need to dedicate more time. And again, it's all it's all by God's grace. It's a it's a response to the gospel, a response to the the love of Christ that's been shown to us, the the work of Christ that's been done for us, all that Christ has accomplished. Um the fact that we have because of what Jesus has done, the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, empowering us to do this. Um but it's like I need to like that needs to be a spiritual discipline of mine is like looking intentionally for ways that I can serve my wife, like looking for ways that I can demonstrate that love and also recognizing the like, yeah, like the like, how epic is it that God would even like appoint this for us as husbands, as like husbands who are just as wretched and sinful as anyone else um, apart from the work of Christ and apart from the transformation that's the sanctification that's like ongoing in our lives by the spirit, like, I think it's very, it feel, this feels very, like, us demonstrating Christ's love to our wives in marriage is so parallel to, like, what we are called to do as image bearers, which is bear God's image to show others. Um, that's, like, something, yeah, that I've been talking about with our, our our older son of just, like, that's what, he has all these little questions about, like, what it means, because he's been listening to, like, Bible stories and podcasts about, like, being an image bearer, you know, and all these stories from Genesis, and um, and it's, like, it's even been, I said to him, and it like kind of like after I said it, I kind of thought about the statement and it opened my eyes to just the reality of like, that's what sin is, is when we are not bearing God's image well. Um, it's when we are not showing people what God does. It's like when we're not acting in line with who God is and his will um, for how his creatures are to like act and behave towards one another and behave towards themselves. It's like that's that's a picture, like that's an angle of what sin is. Um and so, yeah, it's just like, it is, it's like, it's a glorious thing that God would even appoint this for us as husbands. It's like, um, we in need of grace, in need of forgiveness, needing to repent, like this is a job that he's called us to do. And that not just called us to do, he's given us the job and then he's actually giving us everything we need to do the job. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, why in the world am I not? If this is as epic and if this is a, as important as it, as scripture says it is, as God says it is, why is it not taking up more of my bandwidth? You know, I think it's a mm-hmm. good, that feels like, at least for me, a good, like, self-diagnosing, que- uh, di- yeah, diagnosing kind of question, mm-hmm. diagnostic question. Yeah. How does Tyler normally in this podcast? I'm usually not paying attention by that point. Recently, he's been doing a dance, uh, <laughs> kind of like a spin. I guess spin, Tyler like hasn't twirl, been here. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, this probably, oh, I know what he says. He says, this probably caused more questions, and if you have those questions... Send them to podcast at to be the <laughs> <Yeah. dot> com. <laughs> I'm totally invested in this podcast. Really, I am. But uh, there you have it. Yeah.